hello everyone i hope you all are doing great we heartily welcome you all to our youtube channel cat c master if you enjoy what you see hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss an upload well in this session we'll deal with the importance of rb2 and rb3 couplings so this is the agenda so without wasting time we'll just get into it so without wasting time we'll just get into this okay yeah so you could see the name rb2 and rb3s these are the couplings so rb2 is known as the kinematic coupling rb3 is for the distribution of the loads okay if i consider rb2 it shows the name called one too many so the load will be transferred from one or two many nodes and then here it is many to one uh, it might not be like that many to many as well let's see that one okay okay so in short the rb2 if you consider independent nodes has six degrees of freedom here if you I'll show you independent nodes and dependent nodes for the RB2 and RB3s and then we'll get to know how it works. Okay, for the RB3, in short, the dependent nodes has six degrees of freedom. Okay, very important thing. So we'll get to know that. Now, so when it comes to RB2, the force what we apply, it will be distributed equally among all the connected nodes. Okay, so that I'll be showing you. And here, in this case, uh, Force and moments are distributed as per the given leg length. So that also will get to know, just get to know the terms, right? By just seeing this uh, statements, no one will understand what exactly it is. Some people might understand who has experience, but for the new people, so this is what it is. Initially I had faced the same issues. So I just read this statements and then I thought, okay, fine. And then later on I got to know how it is, yeah. Now, so this is the image and you could see here, I'd like to activate the pointer for you guys. Okay, this is the clamp region. So where this is just damped, okay. And then here we have the RBE2 reference. So at this point, this and this are connected to RB2 elements and this is the reference node for that. And if you apply the force here, so it will be equally distributed to all these nodes and here also it will be equally pulled. Okay. If you consider RB3, so this is what the scenario is. So depending upon the leg length, so it will be distributed. Okay. So you could see the shape as well. Okay. Sometimes this scenario uh, might work. Sometimes this might not work. That I'll get back to you guys. Okay. One more example you could see simple. Uh, a rectangular plate with hole so this is clamped and force is applied here and if you consider rb e2 the force will be applied here more and this also will be pulled together okay equally the center hole will try to be pulled with respect to neighboring elements if it is shell it will take this all the neighboring shells and it will try to pull everything okay and here in the rb e3 if you consider they clamped here and if you apply here so it will try to apply the load on this leg length more and it will also try to pull this but in this image it is not showing it is not representing that it is pulling here but practically here also it will try to pull okay and then uh, the last one here is you could see very important so i just wanted to tell you independent nodes and dependent nodes here you could see if you consider RBE2 here, so where exactly you're seeing the center point is the independent node. Okay, so where you're gonna apply the load, and from here it will be transferred to the dependent nodes. Okay, here, so what exactly happens is stiffness will be more for this. So, in short, the motion of the independent node controls the motion of the dependent node. So if you apply the load here, in short, dependent node will also be equally distributed and then the motion of this in short will be controlled by the independent 
node. Okay. When it comes to RBE3 distributed coupling, okay. So here no much stiffness is added. But with respect to the first distribution, so it might create a lot of stiffness at this region because here it is equally distributed. So the, four, the stiffness on the neighboring elements will be less. But if we consider RPE3, the force application at this region will be more and you will have a lot of uh, stiff, uh, like the uh, stress singularities at this region. But be careful while using RPE2 and RPE3, especially RPE3. So we need to think a lot. Okay. But as for my suggestion, I had used both for the same similar conditions. I got the better result for RBE2 and wherever I got to uh, use RBE3. So you can even check if it is feasible for you guys. You can just utilize the RBE2 as per the given condition or else I recommend to go ahead with the RBE2. Yeah. So you could see the motion of the dependent node is weighted average of the motion of the independent nodes okay so these all should move according to that this will also move okay fine so let me take you through this statements in short to go ahead with this so rb2 adds infinite stiffness to the nodes it constrains okay to the nodes it constrains so it will add the stiffness for sure yeah and then transmits the displacements. If you apply the displacement here, it will try to equally transmit. Yeah. And then here, appropriate for the fastener holes and all the type uh, points more rigidly together. So in this case, so everything will try to move together. So practically, if you think, means if you are thinking too much, you will think RB3 is better. If you simply think okay if it is whole the shaft is there if it is going to move in short if you simply think rb2 is better like that means i consider but if you want clear understanding please run the analysis with both and you decide what is best for you yeah so here for rb3 provides a distributed connection yeah and then this is correct and transmit the loads that is true can be used to uh, can be used to make gra uh, graceful transition between plate and beam elements. Mm, okay, so if you have beam and if you have the pleats, so in that case, RB2, RB3 is the best suited for the shell elements. Yeah. So fine. So I hope you got to know, but usage, it is purely based on the judgment and the requirement and the application. So, in some all the cases, I had used RBE2 and wherever I needed for RBE3 also, I tried with this, but I got to know that this RBE2 is giving good results. Uh, means some scenarios, it might add more stiffness. Some scenarios, it might give the better results. So that you need to decide, guys. Yeah, but this is what the uh, exact explanation for the RBE2 and RBE3. In short, to summarize, so RB2 distribute the loads and moments equally to the, all the connected nodes. Here, it distributes as per the like length. Okay, that you need to keep in mind. Okay, guys. So here, I in short means I would like to take you through a simple example where you can understand clearly what exactly RB2 does and what exactly RB3 does. Now, what we'll do is these are the RB two connections will imagine okay these are the two uh, nodes we can take it as and these are the leg lengths okay from here to here and here to here you can distance you can imagine this is uh, uh, better than this means this is more than this particular dimension approximately yeah and now on this particular uh, grid node so if you apply you only having one grid right on that rb2 grid these are the rb2s this is the grid okay i'm going to apply 1000 newton load okay in this scenario if i take rb2 what might be the loads transferred to these two uh, nodes you can take uh, 10 seconds and you can answer it i can pause the video yeah so the correct answer is here it is 500 Newton. Here it is 500 Newton for the RBE2s because it will transfer the 
loads equally on the each and every nodes. This is what the RBE3 does. In short, if I consider this as RBE3, what happens? So if I consider this as RBE3, what happens? Instead of this, I would like to take this as RBE3. Okay, so in RBE3, what happens? It will try to transfer as per the leg length, correct? So here the leg length is comparatively less, here it is more. In the case, what exactly it does? Yes, if you take this as RBE3, so we have the leg length, this side it is more, this side leg length is less. So with respect to the leg length, if you have the, the leg length which is less, there it will try to give the uh, more force. Let's say if it is 1000, approximately it might give you 7, uh, uh, 750 Newton. And it comes to this location, it might be around uh, uh, 250 Newton. Okay. So here it should be around uh, 7, 750 Newton. Okay. So if you have the less leg length, so it will transfer the more force. Okay. So here it is 750. Okay. And here it is less. If you have the more leg length, it will try to uh, transfer the less uh, force. In short, in short, if you run an analysis with respect to uh, two rectangular pleats where you can have the center point connected and if you have uh, RBE3s here, just for your example, in this case, so the result will be practically it will try to pull this one more, okay. So the result will be like this, okay, somewhat. And here is the center, and here it will try to push like this for RBE3, okay. So in short, if you consider, here you have the less leg length. So here, the more force is transferred, so displacement is more. So here, leg length is more, here, less force transferred and only the less displacement you can imagine. Okay. So this is how it works in chart. Okay. I hope this particular presentation, this particular explanation might give you the proper understanding on RB2 and RB3. Finally to summarize, so we had just gone through the RB2 and RB3s and I think I hope you got a a clear cut idea about RB2 and RB3 is where to use, how to use, but still some questions will be there that you need to research and get to the proper uh, outcome and try to utilize the RB2 and RB3. We heartily thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram for behind the scenes content and the updates. Stay curious, stay awesome and see you again in the next video.